Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Today is Thursday, August 22nd, 2019. Um, not a bad day. So yesterday, we'll talk this real quick and then we'll get right into the topic, okay? So yesterday it was 87 degrees here. Uh, today it is 71. <laughs> and we're going to be in the 50s tonight, which I cannot wait because that's going to be awesome for sleeping. <laughs> I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that, I'll be honest with you. Okay, so we're going to jump into this topic, okay? Overpopulation. What could be a cure for overpopulation, okay? So we're going to go back to the 14th century when they had the Black, te black Death, and I think it, I can't remember exactly how many people it killed at the time, but it absolutely reduced the world population at that point tremendously, especially through Europe. Uh, so, a major, major pandemic could definitely curb the world's population. So we're going to look at that scenario. Is that a possibility? Could that happen? With the air travel that we have right now, where, you know, every place has an international airport and, uh, you know, they're going all over the world into different countries and stuff like that, it would be very, very easy. The pups. Um, very, very easy to spread some kind of a pandemic rather quickly around the world. Uh, a lot easier than it had been before. They're nuts. They just love to play. So full of energy. But anyway, so what, what, what should we do as preppers to get ready for that type of a situation? Okay. And uh, Pandora, you stay over it. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Um, so what should we do to get ready for that if, if that possibility? Because obviously that is a possibility. That is definitely something that could happen, a pandemic, okay? So if a pandemic was happening and a some kind of a virus or a sickness that was spreading around and, and taking out large chunks of the population, what should we do as preppers? Well, obviously, you know, preppers are ready for doing a couple of things, bugging out or bugging in. But in that type of a situation, if there is some kind of, uh, like, a flu bug, let's say, that's going around and it's killing a great deal of the population, you're going to want to have a bug-in type of a situation at that point. You're not going to want to be bugging out because you might get in contact with any kind of disease out there. So you would want to prepare for a long, drawn-out period of time of keeping a very, very low profile, uh, you know, while that pandemic ran its course and uh, hopefully took care of business with the people that were not you. <laughs> so, you know, th th that's one of the things I want you guys to think about, too. If you had to be in a bug-in situation, again, thinking of food and water and other supplies, how long are you ready to bug in in that type of a situation? Now, I know a lot of people think of bugging out, and if you have a bug-out retreat and getting to your retreat, that's obviously an option as well. But you're going to want to have as little human contact um, getting to your bug-out retreat. And hopefully, you know, there's not a, uh, a tremendous amount of people in your group, you know, in dealing with that type of situation that you would have to worry about. You know, maybe they had come in contact with somebody and those type of things. So those are all things to definitely keep in mind and to think about. And so, um, you know, with that, I mean, it's like I, I want to hear your guys' feedback on this because um, if we had something happen like the Black Death, which happened back then, I mean, the bodies were stacking up in the streets. Uh, you know, people were just absolutely terrified. And if we had something like that happen today, which is absolutely a huge real possibility that something like that could happen today, um, you know, being prepared for that type of situation, especially the, to bug in and do a low profile. And it's like, so then what do you do if relatives show up? I mean, these are things you guys got to think about, okay? All of a sudden, you're bugging in, and you're like, you know, we're not going to stay in contact with anybody else until this situation's over. And then all of a sudden, all these people that you know are showing up at your residence and are going, hey, help us, you know, we're not sick, we're okay. I mean, you don't know what that incubation period's going to be. And, uh, you know, so th those are things that you definitely are going to want to think about. So here, here's my thought process on that, okay? So we have our, our main places over here. 
And if there was a pandemic type of situation, we have the small outbuilding here, which could be turned into um, an incubation period time, basically um, an isolation area for a week or two weeks to make sure that the people that were coming up were not sick. And now if you get more people coming up, what do you do then? Because you want to, obviously you don't want to just keep adding more people into that area because if those people aren't sick and the new people coming in are, you're going to have to have other places for people to ride out uh, that, that, that quarantine period of time, okay? So where are you, where are you going to put them? Where are you going to put these people? So, you know, like that outbuilding would be a great spot uh, to put somebody temporarily and, uh, you know, to make sure they're in that quarantine period, make sure that they're not sick, so they're not going to be infecting you or your family. And so, you know, those are things that you really want to think about. So, have that... Hey, Pandora, what are you getting into? Are you eating... Come on, stop. I know what she's eating. Yes. Cat treats, aren't you? You having a cat treat? Yes. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, guys, um... So, now see, the only bad part about that cat treat that she just had, it's not a candy-coated cat treat, which those come directly out of the cat litter box. Those are the best ones. <laughs> anyway, so, but anyway, I, I want to hear your feedback. I mean, what game plan do you have if there's a pandemic type of situation? I mean, I have people in my group that I know would plan on coming here. So, uh, how long of an, of a, you know, of an isolation period time-wise would you want to have? No, we got drama. He's always, he's dealing with his girls. But, uh, so again, it's like those are those are things to think about, okay? So uh, I wanted to put that out there just to make, you know, making everybody think about things. You know, how much water, again, do you have on hand? How much food do you have on hand? How ready are you for that type of a situation? And so those are definitely things that we're going to all need to think about plan ahead for, be ready for. So, scary stuff, guys. I mean, because anything could happen. Um, it's more likely that it would be a different scenario, but that pandemic situation could happen, uh, you know, especially after an event. You, you would have a lot of uh, people getting sick and stuff like that because of not having proper medical care, um, just general sickness and, and, uh, and things going on anyway. So, something to think about, and I wanted to put that out there, and I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. Um, I wanted to mention on my website, PrepperNurse1.com, we do have the PrepperNurse1 community over there. If you are looking to try to form a group, if you are looking to chat with like-minded people in your state or in your country, or you're just looking to check out the message boards in there and uh, you know get feedback and just chat with people in general um, that are like-minded, Go over to the Prepper Nurse One community at PrepperNurse1.com. Uh, you have to register so nobody on the street can see what's going on there. It's very, very private in that aspect. So that is, uh, you know, that part is good. But uh, then you sign up and you go to whatever state or country you're in and you can sign up there and, and, and chat with people. We have a singles group in there. We have a seniors group and we also have the... Um, uh, disabled group in there as well. So there's a lot of different opportunities to meet and talk with like-minded people. And so I would definitely encourage you guys to go do that. And again, that is totally free. That does not cost anything. And that's why we do it that way. Um, it's, it's, it's for you guys. It's, it's just, you know, there was a lot of demand for that. And a lot of people were asking about it. So um, that's why we did it. So we're going to check it out right now. And we're going to see what kind of solar we've brought in today. All right, so right now I'm going to kick this up here so you can see the sky, which is pretty nice now. It was overcast uh, for the most part most of the day. So um, we're going to go in here real quick. Good girl. I got to keep an eye on her. She's the ringleader. So are you a good girl, Pandora? Are you a good girl? There he is. She was looking for Caesar. Okay, so we're going to see what we pulled in today. Uh, let's see. I'm, we're in float right now. We've pulled in 2.7 kilowatt hours so far on this side. 
uh, 1.9 kilowatt hours on this side, so we're looking at a total of 4.6 uh, kilowatt hours altogether. Both sides are still bringing in power, so not a bad day, especially being overcast for most part of the day. And so, well, what are you gonna do? That that happens. But uh, so today I had to run down uh, to Heather's school to college. Uh, I brought her her bicycle because when we loaded her up the other day. Uh, there was no room for the bicycle. There was not. So uh, we got the, I got her bike down to her today, and her and I went out and had lunch. And she's been very busy. They've having her doing a lot of orientation stuff, and uh, you know, getting the feel of it. She's got stuff she has to do all weekend. But she's settling in. Um, she said that uh, one of her roommates uh, speaks Russian, and the other two girls speak Chinese. And so uh, the two girls have been lifelong friends since they were little. Uh, they're both from New York City. But uh, uh, the other girl is from Maryland and obviously of Russian descent. And uh, so she said that uh, the, Russian, the girl that's, that speaks Russian was um, talking in her sleep last night speaking in Russian. So it's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, she's going to get settled in. And like I said, she starts classes on Monday. So she's going to be a busy girl. But uh, that's good, and uh, you know she's she's happy. She went ice skating last night. Um, RIT has a huge uh, uh, hockey program there. It's a real big program for them, and so they had open skate for everybody uh, yesterday. So Heather went with a couple of friends that she had made online before even school even started. So she's definitely coming out of her shell, and that's great. And. Uh, She's making friends, and uh, you know that's what it's all about. So I'm I'm really happy for her, and she's going to do fantastic. I have absolutely no doubt at all. But anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you guys too, because I know that you know some of you were concerned or wanted to know how things were going with Heather. And again, if you guys would like to go over to my daughter's channel, she started a channel talking, going to document her journey with college, and that's Hang Out with Heather. So it's H A N G O U T with Heather. So just no spaces in between just type that in all together and uh, that's going to be her channel and she did a video about her moving in day and uh, so she's she's going to do good uh, i'm real happy real happy for her i'm going to miss her i'm not going to lie i'm going to miss her but anyway guys um i am going to jump off of here from now i definitely want to hear your feedback in, on the pandemic possibility what do you think the chances are of a pandemic happening uh, what are your plans as preppers and off-gridders to be ready for that type of a situation do you have an area set aside for you know um to make sure they're a quarantine area to make sure that the, the people are isolated for a period of time to make sure they're not sick and those type of things so um i definitely want to hear your feedback i'd love to hear what you guys have to say okay uh remember guys we are all in this together that is important to remember also remember hug and kiss the ones you love Tell them every single day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed, so we never know what's going to happen. Uh, also remember, guys, STD. It's one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do it. The only one that's going to stop you from getting there is you. Nobody else can stop you, okay? Stay positive, stay happy, and you're going to be fine. Uh, stay away from that negativity because people just, unhappy people want to try to bring you down. Um, it happens all the time, and uh, people hate it when somebody's happy or successful. They can't stand it. So um, I, it's sad that some people are like that, but some are. So, But anyway, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Um, I'm going to throw up to, after this video goes up a little bit later, I'm going to throw up the next part of the redo of the other camper so that you can see the progress on that. Okay? I will talk to you guys later. Prepper Nurse 1, out for now.